Welcome back to Cradle to Grave R. I'm Mark Gingrass, and today we're going to talk about how to go from an R data frame to an Excel file, except this time we're going to actually create the sheet, populate the data, and finally we're going to actually uh, put a formula in the Excel itself. Now that might sound ridiculous because you can do all that within R, but let's not forget we're in a world where Excel is still heavily used and we can use something like this to create templates, right? So imagine the template already pre-formatted based on your R script. So you can uh, open up the possibilities from there. What I want to do is jump right into it like always and we'll start with again the open XLS package, open SLSX package, so library open XLSX. Again, hopefully by now everybody can install that on their own by clicking on the packages install. All right, so we want to create that and I'm going to go ahead and run it. And um, let's just create a, a blank workbook. So, workbook, remember that's just as, as always. So, the workbook we're going to create is using the create workbook function within that package. And I want to create a workbook uh, just like that. Finally, I uh, want to add a worksheet. So add worksheet to my workbook. And I'm going to call it Iris Data. Let's do it that way. So we're going to add that worksheet, no problem. And now we want to write that data to the workbook. So write data to the workbook to Iris Data. And what data do we want to write to? We want to write our data. We want to write the iris data set. That's the guy. That's the goal here. So we wrote the data. So now our workbook object has a sheet called iris data, and we've written the iris data set to that object. Now that object is not written into the file system yet. So how do we do that? Um, 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 save workbook. Got to remember the functions here. Save workbook. And now which workbook? WB, and we'll just call this uh, example.xlsx. And I like to do override equals true, um, and that should do it. Let's go to our files over here. Um, oh, I'm already on files, so click on files. And you'll see my example xlsx file has been created. I'll click on that and just say, I think view file, view file, let's try that. Okay, so it did, it opened up Excel for me, that's good. So that's what I was looking to do. So let me zoom in here. And now you see I have um, the iris data set here and we don't know how many rows there are, but 151, let's say we wanted to do like a sum of say all the sepal lengths. Now, or how about an average? That would make more sense, I guess. So sepal length, we know it goes from row one or yeah, row one all the way down to 152, but maybe we can do that programmatically a little bit. There's probably better ways to do it, but let's jump back into R and think about how we might do that programmatically. Now we know we can programmatically get the, first First of all, let me move this down so we have some space to work with. We know that we can get the observations. Well, let's first open up the iris data set. Let's do that. So let's do my data and let's just actually call it the iris data set. That way we can kind of look at it while we're doing this. So now that we have that, I'll jump down here to the bottom and click on my data so we can see that it says 150 observations. So we know that, but let's get that number programmatically and say, let's just say end data is equal to, right? And we wanna know, okay, what are the dimensions of my data? So we can do dimensions of my data, but if I do that, if I click it, I know I didn't zoom in on that yet. I will do that in post, but you can see that my, my uh, end data is a vector or a yeah, it's got two dimensions, 150 and the number five. Uh, I'm only interested in the 150 though. I don't care how many columns, I just care about how many rows. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna extract the first element of that, right? So now if I do command enter, you'll see it just is 150 and that L just means it's a, um, a an integer value, a number, right? So now our end data is truly that. But now let's add number a uh, number one to it because we again we said we wanted to start on 151 because we have a header. But wait, wouldn't we want a number uh, add two to it? Let's just see. So we ought, we want it on row 152 like a sum, okay? So this is not the most perfect way to do it, but this is one way to programmatically figure this out without 
uh, without problems. So if the data set changed, if it's no longer iris, it's something else, we can still get the end of the rows this way. Now, of course, you can break every single program out there, but I think this suits our needs for now. Okay, so now we have our end data is equal to 152. That's exactly what we wanted. All right, and let me get rid of some of this extra stuff I put in there on accident with my shortcut keys. So we have that, and that's good. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to write a formula at that position, right? So let me zoom in again, and we'll go ahead and do that. There's a couple different ways to do it, but I'm going to show you the simple, simplest way that I know is you create some sort of a formula vector, right? So formula vector, and we're just going to set it equal to a column vector. Hey, this is equal to the average of, and we know that it's in column A, so we're going to say the average of column, you don't need quotes in there, I'm sorry, A1 through A50, no, I'm sorry, A2 through A51, right? That's where the average is going to B and we end the quote there and we can close the parentheses right and call it good so that's our formula vector and I know we can do this programmatically and I'll show you how to do get this a oh, 151 I'll show you how to get that 151 in here using the paste C or the paste zero function uh, afterwards let's test it out and see if it works first so once we have that formula we want to do a write formula function I know it's a lot of functions but so write formula and where do we want to write it our workbook called WB our sheet is equal to iris data and now so the X in this case so you can see the X is actually the formula we want to use we want to say the formula is equal to our formula vector now we could have just easily put a, a C parenthesis quotation in there if we if we will if we wanted to uh, let's go ahead and start, put a position for this, and we want to say start column, we're going to say is equal to 1, but our start row is equal to our end data position, whatever that is. Okay, let's try this out. I'm going to go ahead and click uh, command enter on that. Good, no errors. So it's always a good start when you don't have an error like that. Um, so I hope that you can tell what I'm doing here. We're basically using these functions to append to the object, the WB workbook object, and then we can actually write that object again. Boom, I just, so I ran line 22 here, and it says permission denied. That's because I have it open still, so I'll close this, and let's try this one more time. Boom, okay. So if all goes well, if all goes well, we can reopen up example, and we can have a average at A152, I believe it was. So it looks like uh, 5.006 is the average. In fact, let me oh, let me zoom in first of all. So the average is 5.006. Now if I actually highlight 151, hold Control Shift and hit the up key, down one while holding Shift still, you can actually get the average this way. Uh, I'm in the way though, so I'll just read it to you. The average is it's on the it's it's on the bottom right here where I'm at. 5.84, 5.843. So we are not doing something right, maybe, right? So that's weird. So this should be a formula. A2, so it's highlighted when I do it, to A51. Oh, it's supposed to be A151. I thought I changed that, so let's change that again. Sorry, guys. Uh, A151, let me rerun this. I didn't rerun the code. So boom, boom, boom. Now we should be good to go. View file. I'm. I'm always doing something wrong, so there we go, 5.8433, so we're correct. So that worked, very simple, right to the point. Hope you guys uh, can utilize this to create some templates or to do something uh, that's gonna help your day out. Now I did say that I would show you how to do this programmatically too, so let's just go ahead and do that. The A151, remember we kinda calculated that value using this end data thing. Of course we added two to it, so now we have to uh, play with that I would let's just go ahead so if you're gonna do this correctly you would try to have a variable that says header yes or no and if there's a header you would add one um, things like that and you could say end data is equal to header plus this so this would be like plus my header boolean right so I would say header 
Boolean is equal to one because it's true. I do have a header, right? So I'd run that, run that. And now when I go to use um, uh, my right formula here, I really wouldn't want to use end data. I would want to use end data plus one. So we can kind of keep track and say, hey, the last bit of data is here, true. Now add one to that. So this is a little bit easier to read than what I had before. So we're going to say header Boolean equals one because there is a header, yes. And okay, we've got that all worked out. What I wanted to show you was the end data, which includes the header, we want to add to this piece right here, right? So again, this is within our little C, our column vector, whatever you want to call it, and this is our average. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a paste zero. And a paste zero, we're just going to add that with between the parentheses and the quote. We'll say paste zero. Paste zero means don't put any separated value in there. So we want to paste all of this up to the A, and then I'm going to do parentheses again, and then I'm going to put comma, right? Let's get rid of this other, other uh, quote. So what we have here, if you look closely, I know it's uh, a lot to see, but our paste function closes in all of this, right? And so it's going to append 151, but what we're not going to have is a quote there, which I don't think we need the quote, which makes it easier. In fact, so we're not going to put 151 in there. We're going to type in end data. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to delete everything here. Basically what I just did is I cleared my environment variable. So everything should be, it's gonna be overwritten, don't, don't forget. So if this works, we know we're good. So I'm gonna run this again. Boom, boom, all the way down. So far no errors. Now there's our error. Okay, object end data five not found. That five comes in because of my shortcut key, so ignore that. Command enter, boom, and save workbook. Let's see if it did the trick. Example, view file. Ooh, do you want us to try to recover as much as you can? No. Well, close that. Close that. Oh, we didn't close the parentheses. I'm so sorry. So we do end data, comma, in parentheses, close parentheses. So again, I'm glad that I made that mistake because it's, so control C on all the paste stuff. Come down here, and now you can really see what it's supposed to be when it's done. In quotes, average A2 to A151. All right, so let's rerun this again. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna basically delete everything, and I'm gonna rerun the whole thing. I can do Control A, Control Enter, and then boom, go back to my workbook, and here we go. So let's go down, and it put it at 152 as we wanted, and it's got the right average. Now, of course, you'd want to you know, spell it out and say this is the average and put some format in because we did style format in the last video. All right, so that's that. Hey, if you guys find these uh, videos helpful, again, please like and share. Put it on Twitter, social media, Facebook, wherever you guys think this might be helpful for anybody else. I appreciate all your support, and I will see you in the next video.